Welcome to C++Tutor.com This is the production of C++Tutor.com YouTube channel Learnorama and the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Dev. In this tutorial we are going to talk about the disadvantages of using an array. You know, we, we have been studying arrays before we have, you know, there are many um, tutorials I made on arrays and I love arrays because simply because they are very easy to you know create arrays to to store data and arrays to access the data and arrays and everything so it's it's always a favorite of any programmer but unfortunately there are some hidden um, disadvantages of using an array which we don't realize until you know until somebody tells us so what are those so let's let's take a look at an array we all know that an array is actually uh, a, an array is essentially a big chunk in memory where you know where you store a, a list of elements so if you have a list of uh, integers for example you allocate a big chunk of memory um, and and that's where you store your integers and it, de it really depends upon which programming language you are using there are different you know there there always are arrays in every programming language so but the, the way to declare an array could be different in c for example we have seen this before if you are trying to allocate and uh, declare an array of uh, of integers you declare it like this and in here you have to specify how many elements your array is going to have so for example you know 100 elements so um, now if you declare it this way in in general the the size of this array is the number of elements here times the number of bytes required to store each element which in this case each element is integer so most of the time in in a 32 bit machine it's going to be 4 bytes here and 100 elements which will take up 400 bytes now this is a very simple example you know in most of the programs the real programs you know the professional programs that you are going to be writing um, you are not going to be creating arrays of integers I mean of course you will be creating arrays of integers but not necessarily a lot of times this each element itself you know this little box here this could be a complicated structure you know it could be as an, an struct you know you define a struct my struct and then you define a lot of other things in here integer this this it could be there could be an you know an, an array of integers inside it okay and it could be there could be you know a strings inside it so character name of you know 100 and so on so the size of this structure itself could be I don't know like you know one kilobytes or maybe more and then you might end up in storing like uh, a thousand of those right I don't know may maybe like you are trying to store a structure and this structure for every person every single student in a school and there could be a thousand students so that brings your total to one megabyte right there and then this is just one array and there could be like many other arrays for you know for for different things so your program size could grow real fast the thing is that you might allocate 1000 elements here but you may not use them but you have no choice i mean what you are doing is you are trying to allocate the maximum number possible what you're saying is that okay in this school the number of students is not going to go above 1000 and that's why you are allocating 1000 elements in this area you know if this structure is is uh, is holding the information about a student one single student you want 1000 of those structures so each one each this one of these boxes actually represents uh, a student essentially so so you so what you have if you're trying to store it as an array you have to like like guess that what would be the maximum number of elements 
and and you have to give some margin also okay so if you expect that your strengths is not uh, number of strengths is not going to go above 800 you want to create an area of 1000 okay and currently your number of strengths could be just 500 right you are expecting that in the future it might go all the way to 800 or 900 or something so you end up in allocating 1000 so currently your count is only 500 so out of those 1000 uh, elements in this array you are just using only maybe like 500 or something right so you are wasting most of the memory and you have no choice you cannot allocate a smaller size of array because your software is going to break if you're if you start you know if your number of students exceeds the the maximum that you estimated or the maximum size of this array so you have to estimate the maximum size of an every array in your program so that you never exceed out of it because otherwise you are going to run into program uh, into issues into bugs in your program that you will not even be able to debug so 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 what are wh what's the problem here the problem is that arrays are static in 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 that you know they cannot change their size as far as number of elements is concerned in you know in at runtime while they are while your program is running so that's the that that's that's where the major problem about about arrays arrays are fixed size predetermined size okay because of this you have to you have to um, because of this you actually have to uh, estimate what is the maximum number of elements and you may not even they, there may be some applications that you may not even be able to do and and you have to be optimistic so that you know you allocate more elements that you actually need so that you don't run out of the memory or you don't overflow out of the array when you are accessing or when your your, your program is running because in c at least there are no checks so if you declare an integer array like this and then you are accessing it accessing the elements you know if, for example if you have to access element number one this is how you access the element number one right array of one if you have to access array no, uh, element number 29 that's how you do it but if you are if you have a generic index i then depending upon the value of i you will be accessing different elements in this array right if i is equal to 29 you will be accessing element number 29 but if somehow your i changed to um, to 110 then you will be accessing 110th element of this array which actually does not exist but you are not going to get any kind of error in in your program when it's running you are not going to get any kind of error what you will end up in accessing is the memory location which corresponds to the 110th element and that's bad because you know your original location was up to here and this memory belongs to somebody else it may belong to the same program and may belong to your program but it is actually holding some other variable and now you will be changing modifying and using the value of that variable that's stored here without knowing it and that's going to have result in weird behavior in your program so this these are the issues with with using arrays that they are statically allocated i mean they they are fixed size and you have to estimate in advance you end up in wasting a lot of memory in, in you know if when you when you're dealing with array because you have to estimate more than you are actually needing you know you have to estimate more than what you current need currently need and you have to estimate more than what you are going to es expect in the future for this you know array to grow so that you never never ever run out of m overflow this array and there are other issues with arrays for example suppose if you if this in this array you always want to keep the list sorted right it's an array of integer so 9 the uh, sorry the the value stored here is 9 23 25 64 68 and so on to 
129 for example okay so you have sorted list here you always want to keep this list sorted now if a new integer comes in say 10 so what what do you have to do you still want to keep this list sorted you know you are not going to be able to insert it at the end well suppose suppose there were only you know five elements used the other ones are are not even used so these are all empty so they have garbage so you will have to have some uh, count somewhere that what is currently how many elements are used here so this count is going to be five okay it's going to keep track of how many elements out of this array are actually have the valid values everything else they will always have some value but it's all garbage so you will have to keep track of that so suppose this there are only five integers at this point then the total number of elements are 100 okay now you have to you have to store insert 10 in here but you want to keep your list sorted or your array sorted so where do you want to store 10 are you going to store 10 here which is the next available space if you store 10 here it's going to make this array you know unsorted it's not sorted anymore so where is the right place for this 10 to go this number to go is here in between 9 and 23 but there is no element here so what you'll have to do is to move all these elements one block up one element up so that you have a, an empty space here and then you can store this 10 here now this is then this example there are only five elements so it was it's not too difficult i mean it's it's not going to take too long to do that if you have 10000 elements in here and you have to insert something in the first location in an array you have to move all those 10000 elements one element up and that can take quite some time that can slow down your program so it's very inefficient so if your application is such that you will be ending up in storing elements in the middle of this array then array is not a good choice and what's the good choice we call it linked list linked list takes care of all these disadvantages of array linked list takes care of the fact that array is this is a fixed size data structure linked list every element is individually allocated separately allocated in memory and then they are linked together so you only use up almost the most of the memory that you you use up in linked list is the memory that you actually need you don't waste any memory well you you do end up in wasting a little bit of memory because you know you want to you want to do something some stuff to basically relate those memory locations together to form a list we are going to see this in the next tutorials but you know it's relatively speaking it's a very small percentage of memory that you end up in invest wasting most of the memory is used in to store data and you end up in allocating only the memory when you actually have some data to store okay and it's the other thing is that it's very easy to insert something in the middle of of a linked list or at the front of a linked list it's it's extremely easy it's very fast you don't have to move the, the elements around and stuff so linked list takes care of all the disadvantages of an array and we are going to see what a linked list is in the subsequent tutorials thank you very much for watching as usual if you like this tutorial please don't forget to uh, give a thumbs up and um, don't forget to visit the c++tutor.com website